Hi everyone, happy Tuesday. Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you're joining us from today. I hope you're having a great day so far and you are ready to dive in to some holiday decorating and some great ideas to get your creative juices flowing. On today's So What, I have a great giveaway for any of you who like the Sulky Facebook page, like, love, engage with this post, comment, ask your questions, and share, you will be eligible to win today's great little gift. And that is the Silver Bells Mini Palette for Hand Embroidery. It's actually for hand embroidery, cross stitch, or any type of handwork you like to do. And I'll be going over a little project you can do with this mini palette. It is six threads, six spools of our 12 weight cotton petites thread. Now, you can use this thread in your sewing machine if you use a large needle. About a 116 needle will work for this thread if you would like to do free motion work or top stitching, that type of thing. Um, this heavyweight thread, it's cotton. It's really, really pretty. But the great thing is you can also use it for handwork. And it's actually the thread that we recommend for handwork. It is much, much easier to use than floss. So if you normally do hand embroidery or cross stitch and you're used to using floss, then you understand the plight when you are trying to separate your strands and all of a sudden you end up with a knot and you have to cut it, maybe throw it away or try to get this big knot out and then you've lost some of that floss. Well, Sulky 12 weight cotton petites is actually one strand of this thread equals two strands of traditional embroidery floss, okay? So normally a pattern would call for about two strands in most areas to really make the thread pop. Well, the Sulky 12 weight is already basically the weight of two strands of floss. Plus, it comes on a spool. It comes on a snap spool, in fact, and that means no more tangling, no more knots when you're using it. You simply get a strand that you will use for your handwork, then use the snap end, wind the excess in there, pop it closed, no more tangling, right? Now your thread end is neatly stored in the spool itself. So I love working with it for handwork because it is just so neatly organized, um, but also very pretty colors and it's heavy enough that you usually only need one strand for the majority of your design. So that's my long spiel to tell you about the Cotton Petite thread, and that is the giveaway today. So six spools of this thread, and it comes with a really cute pattern. Now the pattern, you can either do traditional cross stitch, or you can do what is called stamped cross stitch. That is when you're going to take a sheet of sulky uh, stick and stitch, and run it through your printer with the design printed on it. Then you will take that stick and stitch, place it on the right side of your fabric, and sew right through it, okay? Then it's gonna wash away completely when your cross stitch is complete. So it's kind of like a cheater cross stitch in a way because you actually don't have to count anything. So no more counted cross stitch. Um, you basically just follow the pattern with your crosses or your X's to create your cross stitch pattern and then you will wash away that stabilizer. So you can follow the pattern that comes with the Silver Bells uh, handwork palette to do traditional counted cross stitch or you can grab up some stick and stitch as well and print out your pattern and do my cheater cross stitch method or you could also use that pattern and do it free motion on your machine. Now that would be a little bit trickier. However, instead of following the X's with your needle, you would just do straight lines or curved lines following the pattern. So I'm going to go, that was a big teaser for the project that we're going to go through a little bit later. 
Um, let me just show you what it looks like. So it's a advent calendar of sorts or a countdown calendar, really, counting down the days to Christmas. And it has a little marker that is magnetic. That's that little snowflake you see on the number six that you will move across the little calendar until you get to the big day. So really, really cute. And it looks like a ton of stitching. Like, how am I ever going to get this done by December 1st? Well, it actually goes by a lot quicker than you would think. All those stitches are little X's and you just move through the pattern. So this is even great for a beginner who has never done cross stitch before or somebody who is a seasoned cross stitcher. My machine wants to say hello, apparently. <laughs> Where did that come from? Oh, anyways, so very, very cute. And I'll be going through this project in just a minute. But this is the pattern that comes with that Silver Bells six pack that we will be giving away as our freebie today. All right. So I see a lot of you bringing in your questions and I appreciate that so much. We will go through a little question and answer uh, period in just a moment. So Bring your questions, comments, put them in the comments section, and I'll be going through those momentarily. And uh, what I wanted to start with today is you may have noticed the title for today's episode, which it's our 50th episode, everyone. I'm 50. I'm so excited. We have done 50 so what's. And I thank you so much for being along for the ride. It has been super fun and I really love doing these. So I appreciate that you uh, come on and you're very active and we can join together as a community. All right, so today's episode title is Bows of Holly. And if you subscribe to the Sulky e-newsletter, you have already seen this project. I'm gonna go through the how-tos for it right now so that you can get a little bit better understanding of how it all comes together. Basically, it is a freestanding embroidery design that we are actually creating with Organza as well as Sulky Fabrisolvi. The Fabrisolvi is the stabilizer that is that will wash away when your embroidery is complete. You can actually keep it um, between the Organza layers to add more stability and you know, when you're packing it away after the holidays, it will hold up nice and you know very well. Um, but we're sandwiching that stabilizer between two layers of organza, and then we're stitching the designs. And we will melt away the organza after embroidery is complete, leaving us these freestanding little um, pieces of holly. And then we will string the holly along a light string, an LED light string, and create some beautiful decor for the holidays. So I'm going to take you through the how-tos for this. In the description of the post for today, you will find the link to go grab the free project, which is the PDF I will be showing you right now, as well as your design files. Now, Xander Shaw of Embroider Shop digitized these designs and did the how-tos for us. She's really great. Embroider Shop is a great resource for beautiful designs, in the hoop, freestanding, all sorts of things. And to get the design, you'll head on over to her site and grab up the design files. But everything you need to know is in that link that I put in the description for today's post. All right. So let's see if I have the correct photo to show you. Okay, so here's the pretty light string. After it's all completed, you can make as many little holly sprigs as you like. You can do multiple light strings. I will show you how to combine these designs into one hooping. So if you happen to have a really big hoop, hoop that sucker up and put as many holly leaves as you want in one hooping. Combine them all as one design file so you only have to switch out your thread one time and you're golden. So this is what we will be creating really, really fun project. If you don't want to put these holly sprigs on a, um, on a string of lights, you could get a pre-made wreath and kind of stick clusters of them on the wreath. And that would be really pretty for your front door, that type of thing. Okay. So let me find the right thing to start with here. And, uh, 
Um, sorry. Okay, so I'm starting a little ways in on the pattern instructions since I gave you a little bit of an overview how this comes together. So when you get your free project PDF, uh, there will be links to grab up all of the products used to create this. So, um, oh, and goodness, I'm on the very last page of this. So let me, <laughs> let me fix that for a second. Uh, hold on, I've got to move it over. Apologies, technical difficulties. All right, now we're at the beginning. My apologies. Okay, <laughs> so here's our supply list. And like I said, when you download the free project, you'll be getting this PDF, okay? So you can save it to your desktop, you can print it out. It will be there for easy reference. If you view it on your computer, there will be live links to grab up all the products that you see, including this burning tool. Now, it sounds a little scary, and at Embroider Shop, they call it the Burnsy. <laughs> so cute, right? It's basically a little soldering tool, soldering iron, that you use to burn away that organza and stabilizer along the edge of your thread. Sounds scary, but it's not at all, and I will show you the photos of it so um, you know we can lower the learning curve a little bit. So, like I said, you'll grab the, the holly leaves um, through that link and grab up the designs that you need for your embroidery machine. And you can use any size hoop for this. Like I mentioned, if you have a really big hoop, you can combine lots of holly designs in one hooping and stitch out a ton of these. For multiple light strings, you can give them away as gifts. How cute. You can decorate your whole mantle, your whole tree with these, whatever you like. You can uh, make one sprig of holly in a 4 by 4 hoop if that's all that you have for your machine. So there are a lot of options. I do want to mention if there are anybody, if, if anybody's watching and you don't have an embroidery machine, I will be going through a handwork project once I uh, am finished talking about the holly leaves. So hang on tight and uh, watch this demo and then I will get to the handwork folks in a moment. All right. So like I said, we'll be using Fabrisolvi. Fabrisolvi is a water-soluble fabric-like stabilizer. It gives a lot of stability while you're stitching out designs so that the thread has something to grab onto while it's creating those balanced stitches. And then it is easily washed away or burned away, in this case, uh, once the embroidery is complete. We will be sandwiching that Fabrisolvi in between two layers of organza. Okay, so the organza gives you a nice kind of luminescent quality to the holly leaves. It goes really nicely with sulky rayon thread, and that's what we were using to stitch out the designs. All right. So like I said, you can use any size hoop for this. You can see it in a very large hoop. You can combine multiple holly leaves and you can put it in a four by four hoop and have just one little sprig in there and just stitch out multiples of these. And here you can see all the way up to a nine and a half by 14 hoop. Uh, you can kind of spread out your leaves a little bit more than you can in an eight by 12 hoop. So whatever you have is going to work for this project. It's just a matter of how many you want to make and how many hoopings you want to do. And then you can see you're hooping one layer of the Sulky Fabrisolvi between one layer of olive green, oh, satin and organza. Excuse me, I thought it was uh, both layers of organza, but we are using a layer of satin. Uh, so keep that in mind. I'm sure you could use two layers of organza as well, and it would be equally as beautiful. All right, so we get our machine all threaded, everything is in the hoop nicely, and we're just going to simply embroider the designs. Make sure that you trim all of your jump stitches from the front side and from the back side of the hoop, because like I said, these are gonna be freestanding, so we're gonna see both sides of the design. And then use your sharp scissors or snips to trim the holly leaves from those fabric layers and stabilizer. Get as close as you can, but be sure to not clip into the stitches. All right, like I said, we're gonna use that burning tool to get any little excess fibers that are coming out beyond the thread. 
So if you don't get that close, it's okay. We're going to get rid of those, you know, momentarily. So then you'll submerge all of your leaves into cold water or warm water, lukewarm water, and get rid of all of that stabilizer. Now, like I said, if you want to leave some stabilizer behind for just longevity, you certainly may. But when you rinse it away, don't rinse it away completely. If you leave a little bit of that stabilizer behind, it gives a little bit of stiffness to the holly leaves. And when you're drying them, you can actually put them over like some cans or curved bowl or something and shape them a little bit. And then when they dry, they'll, be, they'll have a little bit more um, 3D effect to them, which is really cool. So then you use that soldering iron to melt away any excess organza and satin fibers left behind. You will also use that soldering iron to burn away the fabric that's left in the center. There's a little um, hole in the center where your string light will go through. So you need to burn that away really carefully so that you have space for the light. And then you'll use a glue gun Shout out if you have a glue gun. I have several because I always think that I can't find it and I end up buying another one. So I need a glue gun support group. Are you all with me? <laughs> all right, so you're going to apply a little dab of hot glue to that light collar, okay? Make sure to not get it on the light itself, just around the little collar where the light fits in. You'll apply a little bit of your hot glue and then insert the light into the little holly sprig and let it dry. And then you'll just repeat for your whole light string and there you go, finished holly lights. I mean, so cute and so simple. Um, the machine is going to do most of the work for you on this project. You just need to make sure that you've hooped your fabric properly so you don't have any ripples um, or you know, wrinkles and, and really it's just a matter of smoothing it out with your hands and making sure it's, it's taut in the hoop. So <laughs> glue gun for the win. I love it. Yes. We all have many glue guns, don't we? <laughs> so here's the, ch here's your chance to break it out, uh, for some holiday decorating. All right. So I wanted to mention, you know, I talked about the fact that we are using sulky rayon thread for this. And it's a 40 weight thread, really shiny, really, really beautiful colors. And we happen to have a rayon holiday set, okay? Now, I do recommend the king spools for this project rather than grabbing up the snap spools because since you are stitching out so many of these, You'll run out of your snap spool before your light string is complete, depending on how many light strings you're going to create. So I highly recommend grabbing up the king spool of that red and that green so that you have enough on hand. If you are planning to embroider tons more holiday projects, and who isn't really, you might want to consider grabbing up the Rayon Holiday Bundle. I linked to this in the description of today's post. You save a bunch of money by purchasing the thread packs versus purchasing the spools separately. So I thought I would mention the red and the green that you need for this project is in this holiday thread pack. You also get a white, a neutral, a blue, and a gold. So it's a perfect thing to grab to have some more colors on hand for when you're doing some more holiday decorating or holiday embroidery rather. All right, I'm going to address some of the questions before we move on to our handwork project that I promised you today. Um, I do have another pretty picture. Here is the um, string light turned on, okay? And then here you can see it's turned off. So I just wanted to show you the difference there. So you could see how pretty it is when it's turned on. It's hard to capture these things in photography, but um, you get the idea uh, that that organza is burned away and the edge just looks just like a satin stitch edge. Really, really pretty. Nobody's going to believe that you made these yourself, that's for sure. Okay, so let's address some of the um, questions that have come in. Embroidery is my jam. Same, Amy. 
All right. Um, Janin says, have you ever used a low temp glue gun and do they work well? So I have, I have one of those mini, uh, ones that, you know what? I can't even find the glue for it anymore. That's my problem too, is I get a glue gun. I get one of these small portable ones. Then, you know, a year later or whatever, when I'm going to use it again, I can't find the glue that fits in it. So I have to buy a different one, right? Frustrating. But anyways, the really, really little one that I bought was a low temp um, glue gun. And honestly, it was frustrating to me. I, um, you know, I'm a person who sews with my foot to the floor. I uh, really, I, I don't know, I work on things quickly. Um, I have too many kids to spend too much time <laughs> finishing projects, I guess. So I prefer the high temp ones and I'm just really, really careful especially with something that has organza and satin and you're dealing with lights, that low temp glue gun is probably going to work fine for you because you really just a dab will do you on each light. Um, if you are using one of those super hot ones, you want to be really sure you're not touching that plastic um, light thingy uh, with the tip of your glue gun because you could cause that thing to melt. Okay. So, and you don't want your glue too hot for the same reasons. Um, so in short, yes, I have used one. I'm not a super big fan, but it might be better for this project. All right. Cherry has already downloaded the project. Fantastic. You're good to go. Um, and be sure to send us pictures of your Holly light sprigs. We love to see what you guys create. We get emails all the time from people and it just like warms my heart that you're actually making the projects that we're talking about seeing them on your mantle, seeing them on your tree, that'd be fantastic. And if you do share your stuff on social media, you can always tag us and that way we can see it there and share it as well. Um, get more eyes on the prize. So you can tag us and also use the hashtag so better with sulky. All right. So Patricia says, oh, rayon thread is what we will use, not the cotton. Yes, we're going to use rayon thread for this project. And Amy is asking what size lights. So it's, uh, if you download the project PDF, I have a link for the exact lights that Xander used for this project. Um, you can get them at stores like Michael's. Um, I've even seen them at Target. They are the smaller LED lights um, that you can find just when all the Christmas lights come up. Uh, they're not the super, super small ones, um, so the link in the PDF will take you ex directly to the string lights that she used, and then you'll be able to kind of shop around, um, and you'll, you'll, uh, get the exact right size. Now the hole is big enough that you can put a traditional Christmas light in there. Um, but I, and I'm not sure why she didn't use those. Maybe they get too hot. Um, so just be aware and be mindful of those things. All right. Um, Debbie is giving some pointers on using that Burnsy tool, the soldering tool. She says, yes, it will burn through your fabric if you touch it. Um, yes, they get very, very hot. You need to be very mindful when you are using it. And the tool will come with instructions and um, all kinds of things to safeguard yourself, your workspace, everything um, against burns. So really, really be mindful of that. But once you start using it um, and you get more used to it, um, it's not as scary as it may seem. All right, Betty's got three glue guns. Anybody have more than three? Is Betty, is Betty the glue gun winner? <laughs> so many people have lots of glue guns, okay. Barbara is wondering, is the, is the iron hot enough to burn the fabric? Oh, okay. So I'm going backwards a little bit here. I'm, I think that that's what Betty responded to. Um, yes, it is hot enough and it will burn that fabric. That's actually the idea of it. So, all right. Um, Janet is asking, could you use two layers of organza instead of using satin and organza? I don't see why not go ahead. Um, I think the satin is just in there for um, maybe some extra stability. 
as well as a different kind of sheen uh, for the finished holly. So if you want to use two layers of organza, I don't see why that wouldn't work because there are so many stitches in the design. That satin edge, um, you know, it's almost like freestanding lace and it just happens to have some fabric inside of it. So um, I, I think two layers of organza would work. All right, uh, Barbara's asking, does the rayon thread melt when you use the burning tool? Um, it can. If you get really, really close to that thread, you could melt some of those stitches together. Now, if you accidentally do this, it's not gonna ruin the project, okay? Um, in fact, it might, you know, seal those edges even more. Um, you know, obviously you don't wanna have a melty you know, drippy finished project. But if you happen to get too close and some of those stitches melt together a little bit, um, it's really just going to flatten that area just ever so slightly. And quite honestly, you're never going to notice when it's on the light string. So if you're nervous about doing that, it's not a deal breaker if it does end up happening. Okay. Okay. Ooh, Beth is saying there's a new glue gun stick on Amazon. Do I need another glue gun? <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> okay. All right. Amy says, okay, I get it. The burner allows a closer cut. Uh, that's, that's true. You will get much, much closer to burn away those fibers that often will stick out of the satin stitch edging. Um, along a freestanding design, you can get, you can burn those right away. And uh, then you have a really, really nice finished edge. And like I said, nobody's going to believe that you made this. All right. Let's make sure. Oh, Joyce has four glue guns. Four glue guns, everybody. <laughs> okay. And Tina is dizzy now. Her mind is spinning with ideas. Take a seat, Tina, because I'm going to bring you some more ideas in just a moment. Oh, Della's got five glue guns. Oh, I feel you. She's got a husband who doesn't know how to return things. How many scissors have I gone through because my kids come into my studio trying to find scissors <laughs> and they end up using my fabric scissors for their construction paper. Can I get an amen? Okay. All right. <laughs> Five glue guns for Nyla as well. Five glue guns. All right. So I think five might be the max. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to start walking through our next project. Now this is our handwork project. Like I said, you can do this traditional cross stitch style. You can do this stamped cross stitch style. You can do this hand embroidery style where you, instead of creating the X's for your cross stitches, you do straight stitches or running stitches. Uh, you could also use the pattern and do this free motion style, okay? So there are a lot of options for this. This pattern comes with our Sulky Silver Bells six pack mini palette. We're calling it a mini palette because uh, our regular palettes usually have about 10 threads in them. So since this one has only six thread spools, we're calling it a mini palette. And it has a metallic thread, which uh, is our original metallic thread. It also has five spools of the Sulky Cotton Petites. This is what we like to use for handwork, but like I said earlier, you could also use it in your sewing machine if you have a large enough needle. So what this is, is a really cute countdown calendar leading you up until Christmas day. And we create a little magnet uh, that has a snowflake pattern on it. You can see it on the number six there. And that moves across your hooped work as you lead up to the days until Christmas. So really cute um, just idea that, uh, Turtle Buddy, Turtle Bunny Creations had for us. This was designed by Chrissy Callahan of Turtle Bunny Creations. So cute. So when you're using metallic thread for handwork, 
it's a great idea to pair that metallic thread with one spool of the sulky 12 weight cotton petites. That way you're getting a little bit of metallic fleck running through that portion of the design. But you can also just use the metallic thread by itself. And those little snowflakes that she put kind of sprinkled above and to the side of December and to the side of the little trees, that is metallic thread just on its own. And some of the trees were done with metallic thread mixed with some of that 12 weight cotton. So it's a really fun way to add some sparkle into this holiday project. So for your materials, obviously you need a hoop. Now this is done in a 10 inch embroidery hoop. And if you were not aware, Sulky carries really, really high quality German wooden embroidery hoops. So if you're used to using those brittle hoops that you get really cheaply at the craft store and they don't last very long and they don't hold your fabric very tautly, switch on over to these sulky wooden embroidery hoops, okay? They're great quality, they last over time. You can use this to display this work and then after the holidays, pop it out of the, uh, of the hoop, wrap it up nicely to use next year and then you can use the hoop for some other projects. Also, you, you of course need some handwork needles and then your silver bells palette. So these are the pretty colors that come with this collection. They would be really great for some Hanukkah designs um, and things of that nature too with all the silvers and blues. Really, really pretty collection of threads. And then you need your Ada cloth and uh, some scissors and you can get started. Now, like I said, if you want to do the stamped cross stitch method where you print out your design onto Sulky Stick and Stitch and use that as your pattern, you'll need to also grab up some Sulky Stick and Stitch. It comes in packs of 12 and they're already cut to size for your printer. You can use any printer that you have. Set it to low ink uh, because you just don't need to saturate the stabilizer and then you will place that directly on top of your Ada fabric and sew right through all of the layers and then wash it away when it's complete. All right, so these are the supplies for this. And you basically just follow your pattern whether you do traditional cross stitch or like I said, the stamped cross stitch and get your way through the design. It's a really meditative, way to, you know, kind of find some zen with your handwork and escape into the day, you know, um, as we are all, you know, being called to shelter in place again. I don't know about you, but we are. Um, our school is going back to remote learning. Uh, so we're back here together. Uh, social distancing, right? So this is a great thing to do to pass those hours and, um, you know, just become one with your sewing. <laughs> All right. You know, put on a movie and uh, get into the holiday spirit. Here's where you can see that one strand of 12 weight cotton petites is put into the needle along with a strand of that metallic thread. And it's just a really pretty effect that you can get by marrying those two threads together. And you just do the same one cross stitch for that portion of the design. Carol's asking, can you use a laser printer with the stick and stitch? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. All right, and here is just some more stitching showing uh, just using the metallic thread without pairing it with the uh, cotton 12 weight. So just some little snowflake, little sprigs throughout the work to um, have a little bit more metallic sparkle going through it. And just some close up pictures so you can see that pretty, pretty metallic coming through on the trees and that little snowflake I was talking about. And here's the finished work. Now, it's popped out of the hoop right now. And actually, if you use the stick and stitch, you don't even need to hoop it while you're stitching it because that stick and stitch gives you extra stability to hold on to the fabric. So that's kind of cool. But you do want that hoop 
to ultimately frame your work and hang it on the wall. As you can see, it is formatted, you know, it with that curve to follow the edge of the hoop. So you will want it at least to display your work if you don't use it while you're sewing it. But it honestly can't hurt to use stick and stitch as well as a hoop, especially if you're a beginner with cross stitch or handwork. It just gives you a little bit more to hold on to and security while you're sewing through the design. And then you can see that little snowflake there is on an extra piece of that Ada fabric. And it's really important to finish the edges of that little piece so that they don't fray apart uh, when you go to construct your little magnet piece. So zigzag stitch it. You can do that by hand or machine. You can serge it real fast just so that your edges are, are finished. And same goes for that larger piece uh, for the calendar itself. You want to serge or zigzag those edges as well. Now, if you are brand new to cross stitch, we have a great YouTube video series. It's called Intro to Cross Stitch. And it's uh, six episodes, or excuse me, it's more than six episodes. Um, I want to say it's 12 episodes, actually. Um, but man, it's it's been a little while since we did that one, so I apologize for not remembering. Um, but there are a lot of episodes with Amanda May of Artist Design. She's a really great cross-stitcher, YouTube personality, and she takes you through cross-stitch 101, the basics you need to know. And then as the series progresses, she gets a little more um, advanced and shows you how to utilize um, and get the most out of um, things like antique towels or um, things you can find at thrift stores that you can repurpose into cross-stitch projects. She makes ornaments and gifts and it's, it's really cool. So you can check that out on our YouTube channel. It's intro to cross stitch. There's an entire playlist you can get through um, to kind of uh, become one with your cross stitch skills while you're waiting for your Silver Bells palette to arrive in the mail. All right, so here's the back of the work. Now, I had to show this to you because look how nice and neat the back of this work is. I mean, I was just amazed when, when I'm doing handwork and I go from one portion of the design to the other, um, you know, I, it just, it looks way messier than this. I try to be neat and tidy. I definitely try to weave my thread tails into the back of the work so I don't have knots on the back of the design. But man, she did a fantastic job making the back of this look just as neat as the front. So you'll hoop that finished work making sure to center your design nicely in the hoop and then trim away the excess fabric uh, that's peeking out from beyond the hoop. Now, if you want to save this whole thing so you don't have to go re-hooping it for next year and years to come, you can actually glue down uh, that fabric that's coming off beyond the edge of the hoop. You can glue that down to the inner hoop frame and then you have, you have it always hooped in the right position. Use that glue gun, another use for that, that fifth glue gun. <laughs> and you can do it that way if you want. All right, so then we have to create our magnet. And we're essentially creating a fabric yo-yo around the uh, two pieces of magnet. So the male and female piece. One piece is gonna go behind the work and one piece with your snowflake on it will go on front on the front of the work and that's how you'll move it across the work inside of the hoop. Isn't that genius? I love it. So you'll create a circle of fabric a little bit bigger than that magnet and you will do a uh, basting or running stitch around the perimeter of that circle piece. Then you will pull it tight to gather it around that magnet and that's how you're creating it. Make sure that, whoa, excuse me. I just knocked something off my table, okay? <laughs> Be sure that, um, uh, that was so distracting, I forgot what I was gonna say, apologies. <laughs> All right, so that's that part of the magnet. Oh, I was gonna say, be sure to center your snowflake where you want it before you cut out your circle and then before you um, apply it. So then you'll gather it up and tie it off nicely along the back of that magnet and do the same thing 
for either the male or female piece, whatever you have left over. All right. So after you have your magnets created, you're completely finished and you can hang it up and start using it. And you can add that bow along the top if you want. Just use a cute piece of coordinating ribbon that you have in your stash, um, or you can leave that off. It's entirely up to you. You can hang this with a little bit of sulky invisible thread if you happen to have that, or just hang it on a hook on your wall. It can go right in between your little hoop screw and hang quite nicely and flat wherever you decide to put it. So that is our handwork project. I have been getting some comments from people that say I talk about machine embroidery too much. Oh my gosh, how can you talk about machine embroidery too much? But I do understand if you don't have an embroidery machine that that can be very limiting to you. So I promise moving forward, I will always have a handwork or standard machine option if I'm talking about machine embroidery, okay? So stay with me, people. Stay with me. All right. So I hope you guys enjoy this project and grab up that Silver Bells palette. Um, I did want to show you some other things that we have on sale right now because it is our um, gifts to make and give great sale and it's going on now. Um, however, I just noticed that those images are not quite on hand yet. So if you will just give me a moment, I will find them. Um, and I apologize for not noticing that they weren't there. I went through so many different uh, photos today during the show that I just, it just escaped me that they were not on the list. So here is our first one. Now, I have talked about these for a while. These are Embroider Buddies. They make really, really great gifts. And they, speaking of machine embroidery, they are made so that you can entirely take out the stuffing and hoop up that little belly of the uh, stuffy. So you can put someone's name on it. You could put a design on it. We have a really pretty one that has some metallic snowflakes um, embroidered onto it. So these make really, really great personalized gifts. We have a lot of them in stock. So there are different ones to choose from. Dinosaurs, teddy bears, um, uh, a hedgehog, a unicorn. So I'm sure you'll find one that fits the bill for the littles that are on your list. We also have some pillow blanks, which again, make really, really great, easy way to add some uh, personalized decor for the holidays. And we've got lots of different colors of those pillow blanks. So you can find a, a large scale design and um, really easily have something homemade to add to your holiday decor or to give as a gift, okay? So check out those things, they're on sale right now. And then I also wanted to show you these. All right, so we've got some brand new, really cute gift ideas that you can grab up, add to your order, and make sure you have under the tree for yourself or for your sewing buddies. Um, they make really great gift ideas. So a while back in October, I went through a project for breast cancer awareness and I featured these really cute pink ribbon sewing pins. You can gift these to a friend, you can create a larger project around them and have that as a little accoutrement to the gift, um, but super inexpensive and it really just shows somebody that you care about them. We also have a brand new enamel pin for those of you who watch this often, you know that I am a sucker for sewing jewelry and pins. I've, we've got this one still in stock in the store. And we have this little one. Um, I love wearing these. I love collecting these. I have a canvas bag where I just keep adding little sewing pins to. So we've got a brand new one. It's a little quilty sewing machine and I absolutely love it. We also have some cards so we've got some sewing themed uh, greeting cards as well as wishing you a quilty Christmas Christmas cards. So if you are going to send out cards momentarily to all of your family and friends, 
be sure to grab these up because it really shows your personality and they're they're great for your sewing buddies your your guild mates um, so great little things to give also I'm really excited that we have these in the store now wool pressing mats and we made sure to get a really good quality wool pressing mat if you've never used one before whether you're a piecer quilter piecer um, or even these are great for garment sewing what's great about them is they retain the heat from the iron so whatever you are pressing also gets pressed on the wrong side while you're pressing the front side I absolutely love that I mean it literally cuts your ironing in half um, they they're just a great little invention so I'm super glad that we got them in the store I'll be showing you um, some other projects using this wool pressing mat coming soon. So go ahead and grab one of those or put it on your gift list. You know, I hear, by the way, everything you see here on sale right now, it's 25% off. So you're going to get a great deal on all these new things. Um, so I just wanted to say that a lot of us, our families are asking us, what do you want for Christmas? What could we possibly get you for Christmas? Right? And we can never think off the top of our heads something to tell our husband, our significant other, our kids. We just can never remember, right? Well, start making a list of the things you want in your sewing room. Kits that you want to make for 2021. Patterns that you've always wanted to make but you just haven't purchased them yet. Tools that will make your sewing easier, faster, make you have more fun with it. Um, little pins, uh, little sewing jewelry. You know, they're not expensive, but they're fun to have. Add these to your sewing list. Link on over to sulky.com. Then they will have an idea for what to get for you. So often we say, oh, I don't need anything. I have everything I need. But you know what? They want to give you something right? They, my husband always gets so upset with me. He's like, I can never get you anything. You always say, you're good. You have everything you need. You don't need any more stuff. Um, and then it's always after the fact where I just end up buying something for myself. Like, why didn't I tell my husband I needed that? Because it's just something, it's the gesture, you know? Whether you're going to buy it for yourself anyway, let that person know it would be really great if I had this. So, I'm just putting that out there because so many of us do that. Um, and, you know, we always forget that we want these things added to the list. So make a little list, you know, leave it out for somebody who can see it so you can have something under the tree for yourself as well. All right. So I'm just going to see uh, if we have any more outstanding questions regarding the uh, projects we talked about today. There are lots of links being put into the comments, so if you didn't hit see more on the description, you can rifle through the comments and find links to everything I was talking about today. Um, if you have any issues downloading the free project, it's on our free project page. So if you go to sulky.com, go to our uh, inspiration, find the free project. If you have any problems, let us know at info at sulky.com. We will walk you through how to grab the holly leaves design and how to get your PDF so that you have the instructions to walk through it. Just know, if you do not have machine embroidery software installed on your computer, you will not be able to open those design files. Your computer will say, I don't know what this is, because it's an embroidery design file. So what you want to do is grab the designs, download them to your computer, put them directly on a thumb drive, and go put it into your machine. That's the only way you will be able to view the design unless you have embroidery software. I hear from a lot of people right after we do a free project that involves an embroidery design, I can't see the design, what's going on? All of these problems. It's because they don't have software on their computer. So you have to just put it directly into your machine and look at it there, okay? So I hope that um, clears it up for some people. Okay. Oh, Kathleen says, the embroider buddies come out very cute. Great gifts for children who love stuffed animals. That's so true. My kids each have one, and they're actually really large stuffies. You'd be surprised at how big they are. They love anything that's 
larger than life, really. <laughs> All right. Uh, Giselle wants to know, how do I get into the library of videos on the website? So I was talking about the Intro to Cross Stitch video series. We have a number of other videos as well. It's on our YouTube channel. So you'll go to YouTube and search Sulky of America, and you'll find all of our playlists there. And you can watch our Intro to Cross Stitch, our hand embroidery video series. Um, there's a lot of stuff to sift through. And also, if you missed any of our previous So What episodes, I post them all on our YouTube channel. So you can go through them and, uh, excuse me, and view any of the holiday ones um, from, you know, last year, things like that, and get a lot of inspiration for your creative projects. Okay, Denise says she can't find the Z. Do you have a link for it? So the Z, that tool for the little soldering iron, that's available on the Embroider Shop website. And if you download the PDF for the free project, I link directly to it so you can easily navigate there. But that is an embroider shop uh, product, so you'll, you'll find it over there. Okay, this is a great idea. Barbara says, I take hand stitch projects to doctor's appointments with me just to keep me busy while waiting. That's perfect. That's so great. So wonderful idea to always have a handwork project in progress and keep it with you. You know, you can create yourself a little sewing tote that has your in progress works in it. And when you've got somewhere to go, just grab that tote with you and always make sure to store your stuff in there when you're finished. And that way you can get through your projects. So that's a great idea. Oh, Anne is here for the machine embroidery. I appreciate it, Anne. <laughs> Uh, and too much machine embroidery is impossible. Oh, I appreciate you all. Thank you. <laughs> all right. I just want to make sure that we um, address most of the questions today. If you do have a question that doesn't get addressed, be sure to email us at info at sulky.com. We are always here to answer your questions. Dina wants to know if the cross stitch design is available separate from the thread set. At this point, it is not available separately. It's only available with purchase of that thread set, but you are essentially getting that entire pattern for free when you purchase the thread set. And the thread set is only $19.99, so I think it's a great deal. And then you'll have the threads that you need to get through it. All right, lots of people talking about um, the uh, great little cross stitch um, project. So I'm just going to throw it up on the screen there again. Um, yeah, I like how it's uh, non-traditional holiday colors, really. You know, it's not your reds and greens and golds, but it's these nice blues and metallics. And I love that about it, too. So thanks, Amy. <laughs> and Beth wants to know, is this a machine embroidery pattern or only hand cross stitch? So Right now, it's not available for machine embroidery, but I will tell you a little secret. I have had it digitized for machine embroidery. I just cannot bring it to you yet, but almost. It's going through the testing stage, and I hope to bring it to you um, as soon as possible. So rest easy if you want to do this on your machine. I highly suggest doing it free motion style. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been talking for too long. I need a beverage. <laughs> um, you could do it free motion. You just will not create X's when you are sewing it. So do that whole stick and stitch transfer method. Put it on the right side of your fabric. Lower the feed dogs on your sewing machine. And you can follow the pattern and sew it out free motion style. Now, yes, this will be tedious and take some time, but it will be worth it. It'll be so pretty that way. You can go over the, the X's with just straight lines and you can use that 12 weight thread so it really pops. And if you wanna use a um, lighter weight thread, I would just go over all of those lines two or even maybe three times when you're sewing it. So just another idea if you wanna use your machine, excuse me, for this project, um, that's just another way to do it. All right. Oh, and Amy also says, 
I often take hand work along when I have a long car ride. Um, yeah, not exactly happening right now, I know, but you know, we do have a little bit extra time, maybe, um, if you're not, you know, juggling 18 Zoom calls every day and homeschooling your children while you're trying to get um, Christmas and holiday things done. <laughs> There's a lot going on right now, I do know that, but hopefully we will all have some time to spend with our families and some time off to just rest and relax, and while we're doing that, we can work on a really great handwork project. So. If you've got some time off next week for Thanksgiving, this is a great project to do by hand or like I said, free motion on your machine. You can also get some of those holly lights done so that you can decorate next weekend. Um, if you buy something today, pretty sure you're gonna get it by next week, um, if not sooner, in order to make these things while you have that time off. So, um, and I will be joining you on Tuesday um, even though it is the week of Thanksgiving, so if you are home or if you could just join me next Tuesday, I'll be talking about uh, some more holiday ideas as we dive into decorating. I don't know about you, but I try to decorate the Friday after Thanksgiving. A lot of people have been decorating a little bit sooner this year just because of what's going on in the world. So we can always add some more beauty to our usual decorating routine. Am I right? So thanks everyone for joining me today. Again, I will be here next Tuesday um, to talk all things holiday. And um, if you missed that address, it's info at sulky.com for any questions I didn't address today. I will also go through them uh, while we, or I'll go through them as soon as the live feed ends and add some more comments. So keep bringing your questions and we will get through them. All right, again, we will have a winner tomorrow. I will wait, I always wait 24 hours to announce the winner and the winner will receive our Silver Bells six pack mini palette that comes with that beautiful cross stitch design. So be sure to comment, like, share the post and I will be picking a winner from all of you who have interacted with me today. So thanks again for joining and I'll see you next time.